Hi everybody. Okay, so I want to talk today about the um, eternal battle to do what is right. And um, another way of saying it is to relate to discipline from a deeper spiritual perspective. Now, what do I say discipline? Well, I think a lot of a lot of us, myself included, um, we know that if we do certain things consistently, the things that we plan, the things that we know are good for us long term, that our life will get better, right? Our relationships will get better, our health will get better, our spiritual perspective will be stronger, our work will be more successful, um, our our country will be better, you know, our, our world will be better. If only, right, imagine, right, imagine if everyone did what was right, or what they knew, what they believe was right, what their conscience uh, is telling them at each moment to, 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 to do. I mean, everything from treating other people well, even when we're tired and hangry, <laughs> um, to, you know, getting up from from the bed at the right time, from you know doing our work, from you know at the right time, doing the right the right kind of work that we that are eating the right foods, you know doing the right kinds of health activities, um, to any everything everything is about is each person following their conscience to the best of their ability because if so the world will probably be a far better kinder. Uh, stronger place, right? So, um, and 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 then there's this sort of misunderstanding of spirituality as being go with the flow, do whatever you feel like doing because that's what the spirit, my intuition, my guidance, <laughs> so called, right, is telling me to do this or telling me to do that. My guidance, my my what I feel like doing is eating a bucket of ice cream right now on the couch, um, you know. I am forgiven and forever loved by God, so it's okay for me to do that, <laughs> right? And technically, that's true. Technically, it is true that, you know, God, uh, the universe source, loves you forever and ever and ever and is pouring forgiveness to you at all times. And you can, there's nothing, and, and that's that's the paradox, right? That That is absolutely true, that there's nothing wrong that you can do. There is no sin that's great enough to knock you from the pedestal that God has placed you on as the most precious being in the universe to cherish and to love forever and ever, which is true for every being in the universe. God is powerful and, you know, uh, big enough to to place every every single being as on the, the to make every being feel as if they were the only being the only beloved in the whole universe so that is true which is why there is this common misperception of spirituality as just do go with the flow do what you feel like doing even if it's not you know eating a bucket of ice cream on the couch but it's like it's it's not following discipline it's not follow it's not following your conscience essentially your conscience says Okay, let's do this, do that. This is healthy for you. This is good for you long term. And yet the ego comes up and says, "Oh no, I think I want to do this right now." And then it's okay. I'm forgiven. Um, go with the flow. But so so let me suggest a perhaps a deeper spiritual perspective. I don't know. It help. It's it's deeper for me anyway. <laughs> Maybe it's obvious to you. We'll see. But if only, if only we could feel the love of God. Use the word that inspires you the most. If only we could feel abundant source. If only we could feel the oneness of the universe. In the moments when we need to decide to do the right thing, to do the healthy act for our bodies and our minds and emotions, to treat the person with magnanimity, with bigness, with forgiveness, even when we don't feel like it, even when they just did something that 
makes us feel uncomfortable and bad or whatever. And we naturally, our egoic self wants to reciprocate with, you know, with, uh, you know, with revenge, even in the tiniest way of saying something back, you know, or of treating them with silent treatment or whatever, right? Um, when we are doing our work, uh, we, we, we might, you know, our work might involve creating something and it's hard to create things that are of value. And so, um, in that moment we will say, oh, social media, let me go and be a spiritual person and go and comment on other people's social media because that's of service to them, right? Or <laughs> whatever excuse our brilliant, brilliant mind creates to seem spiritual to ourselves even though we've just violated or, um, you know, uh, moved away from what the conscience is saying. No, this is what you plan to do. This is of integrity for yourself. Um, you know, anyway. So, if only we could feel deep, abiding, abundant love, being loved in that moment, and if we did feel that abundant love, divine love, in that moment of decision, then wouldn't it be easier to decide to do what's right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. If we felt the connectedness to all of the universe, right? Whatever you want to call love, the, uh, the oneness, the abundance, the grace. If we felt that, then wouldn't it be easier to do what's right? I think so, right? No matter if we're tired, let's say we're tired. We're tired, okay? We're hungry, and yet in that moment we feel abundant love and grace and connectedness, then it would be easier to say yes let me go and take a nap even though i feel like i'm addicted to social media or addicted to watching this video or what whatever addicted to playing this game or whatever if we were with a you know with with, with another person and um maybe somehow things didn't go well with us go well for us that day and this person says something that we perceive as rude or mean or insensitive or attacking our character or whatever, or um, unloving. And yet in that moment, we were able to resource abundant love and well-being, uh, it, spiritual well-being. Then wouldn't it be easier at that moment to give that love back, to, to, to return meanness with love, to return, uh, yeah, to, to return, to reciprocate their meanness with love, with kindness, with forgiveness, with humor, with lightness, with caring, with compassion. Yes, I think, I think so. Uh, at work, let's say we are needing to create something that is risky. Um, that may, uh, you know, may, 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 um, not not make money <laughs> let's say make maybe something that we think okay this might be really valuable but it might also flop there's a risk here i'm t putting energy into this project and i don't know if it's going to do well but it's it's needed uh in that moment it would be easier to for example go surf social media go and tweak our website a little bit more to go and do the one million other things do a little bit of bookkeeping or light bookkeeping or to do one million other things instead of take the risk and the scary and the anxiety of creating something of possible value or possible failure if in that moment we felt abundant love if in that moment we were we recalled the oneness of everything and the ultimate and abiding security of our souls if that were true, if we felt that in the moment, wouldn't it be easier to take the risk? Wouldn't it be easier to be courageous and experimental experimentation mindset, growth mindset? Yes, I think it would be. 
So that leads me to, to my conclusion, which is perhaps the thing to do before the discipline, the thing, the, ta the, the action before doing what's right is to return, return, return to the ultimate source of love, of security, of oneness, of joy, of peace, of kindness, of grace, of lightness, of enoughness. If we were to resource ourselves and therefore feel the abundance and the peace and the love of source, then my goodness, making the right decisions would be so much easier because we wouldn't be making decisions or living life out of fear, but instead out of love. So the conclusion for me, therefore, is to me, what I see at this moment of the purpose of my life is moment by moment to practice resourcing love as deeply and as quickly as possible. Right now, it might take me a couple minutes of, you know, energy reboot and really like a little bit of meditation and prayer and movement or whatever to like resource love again so that I can make the right decision for health, for well-being, for compassion, for courage, for uh, service, you know, true, truly selfless service. But the more I practice, the more I can find ways to quickly and deeply resource love, then the more easily I can, the more quickly I can make good decisions, the more uh, possibility I can have of being disciplined, di disciplined, self-disciplined of using my wisdom to plan what my, what my actions are going to be and to do those actions rather than be taken off track by my emotional, my inner resistances and conflicts and fear, essentially. So the, so this is why I, I, I think, okay, so besides resourcing love is what we're talking about here, right? The practice of resourcing love in as many moments of the day as possible and to do it as deeply and as quickly as possible, which again, I call it the purpose of my life because it's going to take the rest of my life at least, <laughs> if not a thousand lifetimes, right? To, to practice, uh, to do it really well. Um, I certainly am very much still, I feel like I'm still in, you know, very much a beginner in this. I'm like just realizing it this week. Oh, that makes sense to me. Oh, that's the mission. Ah, that's the purpose. Ah, that's the, um, the main homework or task of every day, of every moment, is to resource love, resource love, resource love, so that I am in this, uh, the best state of being I possibly can be to do the right thing, to make the loving choice. And so resourcing love has this obviously huge daily benefit of doing the right thing. I also believe that by practice, practice of resourcing love, abundance, grace, joy, peace, resourcing the divine, okay? Returning to the divine in as many moments of the day as possible. 
So this is not just a morning meditation, right? Like, I always caricature spiritual practice, and this is, again, like it's a caricature. It's 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 a it's a straw man. It's easy to tear down this spiritual practice of oh, I, I'm so spiritual. I meditate for one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening, and then the rest of the day I'm a jerk. <laughs> rest of the day I completely have amnesia about what the heck spirituality is and what the heck equanimity is. I don't. Pra- I just practice my deep, deep, deep meditation and rituals in the morning and evening and midday. Fine. Three times a day, I'm so spiritual. But what about at 3 p.m. when it's not the middle of the day? Or what about at, you know, 9 p.m. or I don't know, whatever. Pick, pick any time of the day when you're not, when you haven't just come out of your meditation. So to me, to me, my, what works for, what, what is the mission for me, the practice for me, is to come back like not three times a day, but 35 80 times a day. Like that is living consciously, right? Like not, not just a morning practice or evening practice or midday practice, but every five minute practice. Like every five minutes I should be like, what, what, where, where am I? What, do I? Am I aware of spirituality? Now, of course, the more deeply and the more frequently I practice, the more it becomes integrated into like just the way I am and like I level up a little bit more as the normal the normalization like the normal state of being is is higher because of my frequency of practice and then the continued frequency of practice raises me even higher and then even higher the state of being becomes more sublime as we keep practicing keep practicing throughout the whole day it's not twice three times a day but it's twice it starts with twice an hour and then three times an hour, and then five times an hour, and then ten times an hour. Now, I don't know if we can do beyond ten times an hour, because that's literally every five minutes. We keep, you know, conscious, like, oh, awake again. Five minutes later, awake again, like a reminder, you know. Um, that might be, you know, more than that might be crazy making, because we can't focus on whatever else we're doing, because we got every minute, we got to go back, go back to God every minute. That's crazy. But but right now, what I've been trying to do, what, 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 what has become more normal for me is every 10 minutes, at least during my working day. Like when I'm not working with a timer, it's, it's harder to remember every 10 minutes because if I'm with my, you know, with, my, with my family or with friends, I'm not going to like have a timer go off every 10 minutes because that's, that's socially inappropriate. So I have to find other ways during my off times to remind myself again. That's why some people wear like a like a bracelet that they can remind themselves, you know, or, or some other visual or physical cue to keep reminding themselves to come back and come back, come back, come back, come back. So, well, I was going to say one more thing. I, I think besides this, this resourcing of love, besides the benefit it has for doing the right thing, of discipline, of living life consciously, besides that, I think, and play with me here, this is a nice imagination, whether it's true or not, I'll leave it up to you. But every time we resource love, like bring love again, the, bring the divine again to this dense third dimensional reality, every time we do that, we create this ripple effect that ripples out into many dimensions, many dimensions beyond our physical senses. That's what I believe. I mean, that's a nice imagination. So imagine every time you resource love, you like, like put, put a, a vibration of the divine out into many dimensions again like like and so somehow that's a really important work I believe it's my highest work right every moment uh, as many moments every 10 minutes (laughs) right now all right right now you might be starting this and you go God if I could just do once an hour that'd be amazing if I do three times a day of resourcing love that would be amazing great right Start with what's doable. Don't go, great, I'm going to do it like George every 10 minutes. That's re- it's going to be too much. It, it takes more stamina than you might have at this moment, right? Of like your brain having to uh, return again. So maybe, maybe it is good to start with once a day, or twice a day, three times a day, right? Three times a day. It's wonderful. Morning, midday, night. Wonderful as anchor points. Anchoring love again. 
into the into the dimensions beyond our physical sight like how many beings does this affect unlimited i mean uh, how many we cannot even imagine possibly unlimited numbers of beings every time a resource love and it just like a pew, goes out into the i imagine this like beam of light just beam of love just like pew, into the into the many dimensions uh start with three times a day you know um and then beyond the three times a day, and then every time you're at work, try to do a half, 25 minute, half hour timer on your phone. So every half hour you return again to energy reboot, which is my practice of resourcing love essentially. If you don't know energy reboot, you can look it up um, on Google, energy reboot. Google knows my energy reboot and you can watch my videos about that if you want to. But anyway, I hope this is inspiring. If we can resource love the more I resource love in every moment, thereby transforming this earth and its many dimensions, and therefore having the resource to be light again, to have to feel enoughness again, to be able to make a good choice at this nexus point again, to understand again that this is a safe stage for giving love. So I hope. This is helpful in some way, and thank you, thank you for watching.